Hey there, comic book fans. I'm back again for another week of showing you the comics uh, I got at the shop this week. Go off my pull list. Well, this first one wasn't actually off my pull list. I've got five comics this week, four from my pull list. And I picked this up off the shelf because I saw it there. This is one of the Marvel True Believers reprints. So it was only a buck. And I got this one because I, I, this is from the wedding issue of Deadpool. I guess it's obvious because they call it the wedding of Deadpool. And um, the artist is Scott Koblish, or at least the penciler is. And I know him. He's a friend of mine from back in my Marvel days. He, I haven't seen him in years since he's a West Coaster now. But I wanted to pick this up originally because uh, it's a really cool cover. I think this is the one that he got in the Guinness Book of World Records for, for the most characters on a cover. And I was, like I said, I was going to pick this up when it came out last year, but it was a freaking $10 comic. And uh, I pretty much didn't want to spend $10 on a cover. So I saw this there for... A dollar and went, I'll buy that for a dollar. Not bad. Real interesting. Uh, he oh, Dragon Man. He squeezed a lot of characters in there. But anyway, if you want this cover and only want to spend a dollar instead of ten dollars, pick up the True Believers edition. And then we've got Stray Bullets, Sunshine and Roses, number 13. Uh, their crazy heist is finally. In full swing, though it looks like they're taking a break from their crazy heist on the cover. Um, this story has been 13 issues long so far with uh, the our, our two uh, heroes there and the, on either side of the stripper because they're in a strip club trying to pull off a heist so they can get out from under the thumb of a gangster and uh, hightail it out of town. But of course, nothing, no plans ever go right in Stray Bullets, and everything goes wrong. So uh, we'll see how things go wrong this issue. And then we've got Birthright, issue number 15. Last issue we left off, our hero slash villain, we're not quite sure which one he is, uh, was being confronted by the police, and that's what we've got on the cover this month. So um, there's all sorts of betrayals and plans and people being puppets and is this guy here going to end up being the hero or the villain of the story and all sorts of interesting things going on in Birthright and here's a police officer who's also um, who's a mage from another world disguised is he a good guy or a bad guy we don't know about him the little brother who's a good guy, but he's got something, some sort of mystical power helping him who we think is good, but maybe not. But anyway, I very much enjoy Birthright. Um, it's a good comic. Check this one out. And then we have issue number 17 of Outcast. The, everything came apart at the seams last issue with the uh, two lead characters being split up. The... Uh, Reverend here got thrown into jail, and then the lead character got his butt kicked by one of the demon things. And all sorts of, uh, they're starting to figure stuff out in this book, but they still haven't figured that much out. And uh, so far I'd say the demons are winning. Even though we're, I'm not quite sure what the demons are trying to win. Who knows, they probably want to take over Earth or something. Doesn't everyone always want to take over Earth? But uh, Outcast remains a good book. I uh, very much enjoy the Paul Azaceta art, who is also, Paul is also someone I know from back in my Marvel days. He's a nice guy. You, he used to work in the Marvel bullpen with me in the early 2000s, I think it was. Wah! But Outcast, issue number 17. And the final new issue for this week is the ever-wacky Ted McKeever's Pencil Head. Don't believe everything you hear. A mostly true five-issue series about the whacked-out world of comic books. I've enjoyed the first couple of issues. This is what, issue three, right? Where's the, where's the issue number? Issue three, there we go. The issue word. Um, as he goes through a bunch of... Uh, that's uh, Archie Goodwin there, I believe. 
He goes. Uh, he he renames a bunch of the editors he works with in the '90s and gives you a little bit of his experience, all mixed in with some really strange Ted McKeever weirdness. Ah, <laughs> uh, I look forward to reading this one. Um, I didn't really know what to expect from Pencil Head, and now I kind of do. And I'm enjoying it. It's a real life, and this is this is some strange ink monster that follows him. Though on the cover, he looks like a crap monster. So, uh, <laughs> being that the inside is black and white, he looked like an ink monster because of all the uh, um, blacks he drew him with. But now uh, he's brown. But anyway, pencil head, fun read. Give it a try. I also want to do another a quick pop in about something I read this week that I very much enjoyed, and that is one of Rick Geary's Treasury of Twentieth Century Twentieth Century Murders. He's also got Treasury of Nineteenth Century Murders. Uh, very, I, I love these. I'm a history fan. I'm a nonfiction fan. Takes place in nearby New Jersey. I believe this is Central New Jersey. At Staten Island down there is the NY. And it takes place in the early part of the 20th century. And uh, two lovers were murdered. And it goes through the suspects and the police investigation and who did what. And I really enjoy Rick Geary's art. And it's mostly told in, you know, narration and pictures. So it's not your usual word balloon stuff, but Rick Geary is very, very good at it. He does it such a good job. It's uh, interestingly enough, you would think it would be different than reading a comic that's all made up of word balloons, but it's really not. I mean, <laughs> amazingly, it's you know almost all narration, but it, it I don't really notice any difference. Oh, look, a word balloon. And reading this in a comic that's all uh, word balloons. But anyway, this is one of... I have, uh, I don't know, 10 or 12 of these books. I I like all of them. They're just... I just find, like I said, history, nonfiction is just a... Uh, it's just in my wheelhouse. So check out some of Rick Geary's uh, works. Give Lover's Lane a read. And finally, we'll give you a look at my background art here, which is some ink drawings that I just finished that have been sitting around forever in their pencil state uh, to tell you how long sometimes like uh the especially since like this one right here look at the, there's just so much line work in there with a uh, french curve and a uh pen that it's kind of like i really have to be in the mood to do something i actually made the pencil drawing of this i looked it up I think it was in June 2014. So this has been sitting around for a year and a half waiting for me to finish it. I still want to add some color to it on the computer. But it was like, it's just so... Yeah, I really have to be in the mood to do something like this. And it turns out I wasn't in the mood for a very long time. And this one too. This one came from... Whoops! Dropped it. This one came from, I originally did the pencil drawing in November of 2014. So this has been sitting around for almost a year and a half too. And just because, like I said, this takes this takes a lot of pen and uh, French curve work that's, uh, that can be tedious. Sometimes it can be good because it's like, uh, it's like doing something, whoa, it's like meditating in a way, except it takes more concentration at times because it takes hours and hours to do. <laughs> but you sit there with a French curve and or various French curves and straight edges and a um, an India ink marker and just kind of chip away at it piece by piece, making line by line, trying to get it the way uh, I want it to look. But uh, I like the way those come out, even if they did take me uh, a year and a half to finish them. So you guys have a good week out there.